Hey, Walter Sorrell's back with more tips for the knife maker. Today, forging an axe. So the axe that I'm going to be forging today is not going to be a full-size felling axe, uh, but it's also going to be bigger than a hatchet, so kind of a hunter's axe or a sort of a medium-sized axe that you'd use for limbing or, you know, that you might take camping or something like that, but where you wanted something a little bigger than a hatchet. Uh, this video is going to be broken into two pieces. Uh, we're going to do the first part showing the forging of the axe head itself, and then the second part will show the making of the haft or the handle. All right, let's jump on it. I'll be honest, I haven't made many axes before, so this is somewhat of a learning experience for me. I'll begin with a piece of O1 tool steel. Normally axes are made from lower carbon steel than this, but this should work just fine. I'm heat treating it in a way that will result in a somewhat harder edge than a conventional axe, but it'll have a nice resilient body so that it won't crack under heavy use. More on that later. The biggest trick in forging hafted tools is getting the eye right. If it's not square or if it's off center, it'll take a lot of work to get things right and it may never function correctly. So after welding it to a handle, I'll carefully measure and score both top and bottom with the eye's location. By chiseling it, I'll actually be able to feel the correct location with the punch that I'm using to make the hole through the body. The punch is made with a flat top so that as long as it's in full contact with the flat die on my hydraulic forge press, it should go pretty straight down into the steel. The handle's bent so that it stays out of line with the handle of the axe head. If they line up, they'll not only interfere with each other when you're working, but the force of the press can potentially cause serious injury to the smith. The first time I plunge in, I make a rookie mistake and go a little too aggressively and the tool gets stuck. A little bit of banging and swearing fixes everything, but I'll go slower on the next plunge. I'm working from both sides, alternating one to the next. If you only go from one side, it's easy to get out of line and end up with a cockeyed hole. All we're trying to do here is to get an even hole all the way through. We'll enlarge it later. And there we are, a nice clean hole. Now we'll turn to a drift. A drift is basically a punch that's shaped to the exact shape and dimension of the hole that you're aiming to produce. Typically, axes have a bore that's shaped sort of like an elongated egg, with the skinny part of the egg pointing down towards the edge. You can make drifts in hammer through form, where there's no handle, and you just drive them right on through until they fall out the other side, and those produce a pretty even hole. Or, you can make them with a handle, like I did here, which can only be hammered partially through the head, and then have to be withdrawn after each heat. This results in a tapered hole if you only go in one direction, or an hourglass bore, as will be the case here, when you use the drift from both sides. I start out using the hardy hole on the anvil. 
and subsequent heats as the tool gets too big for the hardy hole, I'll turn to my post leg vise. As you can see, the drift causes a pinch in the head, which we'll need to remedy. I'll do that through a combination of work with the press and the hammer. Hey guys, let me jump in quickly to send out a big thanks to all my supporters on Patreon. Now, if you're not familiar with Patreon, it's a service that allows you to support guys like me who bring something into your life that you find valuable on YouTube or wherever. Now, personally, I've gotten just a stupefying amount of value from uh, you know various people that I've watched on YouTube. And I know how hard it is to make these videos and how much time it takes. So it really gives me a feeling of, you know, like being a, an adult responsible guy to give back a little in return for the benefits that I've harvested from those guys' videos. So uh, if you wanna have the same happy sensation of personal responsibility, Here's my Patreon address, or click the cards for more info. Thanks, and now we're back to it. Next, I'll do some preliminary shaping of the blade. For that, I'll change dies on my press. I want to expand the width of the blade while thinning it. If I simply used a normal drawing die or a flat die, I'd end up with an axe that didn't really flare out much, and that would be, well, the technical word is crappy. I'll do the shaping of the blade in several stages, but I want to get the roughest work done here so that I don't have to go too hog wild on this thing after I've perfected the shape of the eye. Guaranteed, if you do a whole bunch of forging after the eye is shaped, you'll end up squashing it and you'll kind of have to redo it. By forging a tang that runs down into the hammer, we give a little bit of extra support to the axe head. Now more work refining the shape of the axe. I want the bit to thicken a bit as it moves into the body and then dip down with a tiny relief behind that, and that'll help it bite into the wood without binding. If an ax is a simple wedge, it won't cut nearly as effectively as if it has that relief forged into it. I'll normalize the blade several times, heating it to around 1600 degrees, then cooling it to refine the grain structure.
Then I'll roughly anneal the blade, heating it to below critical temperature and then leaving it to cool in the forge. This should result in a ductile, close-grained blank, making it shock resistant and unlikely to crack. Now I'll turn to the grinder and refine the shape a little. I could take off all the scale and make it look like it came from a factory, or I could leave all the scale on and have it potentially end up with some kind of geometrical flaws that will undermine performance. So I'll kind of split the difference, doing my best to maintain that hand forged rustic look while refining the symmetry and geometry to make it perform well. And here's where we end up. Next, it's time for heat treat. It's not uncommon to see axes fully hardened and then to torch temper them back around the eye so that there's no danger of them cracking during use. I'm taking a different approach, borrowed from knife making. In order to harden O1 steel, you need to heat it to around 1500 degrees, then cool it rapidly in oil. In this case, I'm positioning the blade so that only the edge will be brought to critical temperature. The rest of the blade will get pretty hot, of course, but not hot enough to make the martensite transformation that will harden the blade. So, after a brief soak at temperature, I'll plunge it into engineered heat treating oil. A quick test with a file reveals that the steel has hardened on the edge, the file just skating across the surface, while it bites into the body of the blade, revealing it to be nice and soft, or we want it nice and soft. Then it's into the tempering oven at 475 Fahrenheit for two hours. This will soften the hardened portion of the blade just a little bit more, relieving it of any potential brittleness. So I hope you enjoyed seeing the metalwork part of this process. Uh, next we'll be doing the woodworking in our second video. Uh, that'll be coming probably in a week or so and we'll show the making of the handle. Thanks for watching guys. If you feel like you got something out of this video, don't forget to subscribe. Also, click on the link to Patreon for a great way to give back to the channel. Plus, check me out on Instagram, Facebook, Twitter. Links in the description. If you want something sharp and pointy, maybe a gift for yourself or one of the cooler people in your life, check out my Tactics Armory website and pick up one of our tactical or outdoor knives. And finally, if you want to learn to make hamones or Japanese swords, check out waltersorrelsblades.com where you can find videos about how I make hamones as well as forging, mounting, polishing, and fittings for Japanese swords. Thanks and see you soon.